good morning and welcome to another Wellness Wednesday with Kathy Stevens, myself. And once again, I just want to let everyone know that I do pay attention to the comments in the chat box. And it's my way of knowing that all the broadcasting is going well. So please do give me a thumbs up. Let me know you can hear me and see me. And uh, let's just take a few seconds to go over what we are focusing on for this month. Remember that June is officially known as Health Awareness Month, and there are several health-related conditions that we try to give a little extra focus to during the month of June, one of which is basically focusing in a little bit more on mentally challenging diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia. And so just the fact that you're here today, uh, maybe you know someone that is suffering or you want to avoid suffering with these diseases that are somewhat age-related. But we do know, and this is really exciting, uh, to know that regular exercise can significantly, significantly, sorry, reduce the chance of developing uh, challenging diseases like dementia or Alzheimer's by about 30%. So it is well worth your time to spend some time exercising. And you might ask, what type of exercise? Everything from lifestyle movements like gardening and cleaning your own house or doing different chores that have a physical capacity to them to more organized or structured activities, in particular cardio activities that you can continue in movement for about 10 minutes or more. We call that aerobic training walking, cycling, doing our class, because we're here for at least 10 minutes we do of nonstop activity within the 60 um, minute workout. So these would all classify as appropriate workouts for general fitness and in doing that to help ward off uh, future problems, mind problems, whether it's just simple forgetfulness or dementia and Alzheimer's. Now, the research isn't as clear in terms of whether you can re reduce or reverse uh, Alzheimer and its complications with exercise. But one thing we do know is that it hits a few things that we would consider kind of like the top three things of importance when it comes to feeling good. And that is, um, feeling good about yourself, feeling a sense of accomplishment that comes from exercise, mood elevation, which is so important for everyone, whether you're just dealing with daily stress or some type of a challenge, um, a mind challenge or a mental challenge, neurological challenge like dementia or Alzheimer's. And then again, just the idea of getting the blood circulating and more oxygen to the brain. So those are the things we want to keep in mind. Some of the reasons that maybe just getting in a little more of that aerobic exercise is important during this month. And again, remember that would be a minimum of 10 minutes of nonstop activity that elevates the heart rate, makes you feel like you need to breathe just a bit more. It doesn't have to be super difficult or breathlessness that you're going for. Interval training is a whole different way of training but we don't need to work that hard to gain the benefits that I'm talking about, which is just that elevation of mood, that circulation of blood, and that feeling of accomplishment. Now, speaking to feelings of accomplishment, one of the things that I've designed for this month is what we call our challenge, our fitness challenge month. And that's just to kind of, again, give you something a more goal-based uh, to be able to think about and feel good about achieving throughout the month. So a quick uh, call out to those of you that have said hi this morning, Pat, Craig, good to see you, Ellen and Doug. So if you see the chart that I posted today, and I also posted a blank one so that if you want to work at your own pace or you feel that the um, challenge that I've set for you is a little too high, you can fill in whatever you do accomplish each week. And hopefully the goal is that we all see some progression in these base movements that we're using for the challenge. So just to review, we're going to be doing step ups on the right and left leg. We're going to be doing squats and we are going to be doing push ups. Those are the actions we'll be doing. But we're going to start off with single leg balance, which is a test for stability and core uh, just core ability to hold everything together and stay on one foot for longer and longer durations. And please don't worry if this is your first week. 
just jump in and do what you can. Maybe make a mark on your own personal calendar if you printed it out or have some other place that you're charting this of what you did today. And the hopes is that if you are working out with Dan and I uh, two to three times a week, ideally three times, or even more because these are all recorded so you can come back and do them after um, the day or at the at any day of the week. And so if you are, then you're going to see definitely some progression and be able to monitor it and mark it. And recording it is a really good way for you to give yourself the attention you need to feel good about what you're doing, maybe even some rewards if you reach your goals. So I left some room on the chart for you to write some of those goals, whether it be weight loss, whether it be uh, mood elevation, whether it be, uh, I don't know, just accomplishment. I'm able to do more push-ups than I could before. Whatever it is, something that you're, you're goaling, you're trying to get to this month, and then put in a reward. It could be anything from a new outfit to uh, ice cream sundae on Sunday. So and notice I said on Sunday because I don't mind treats and using food as a reward as long as it's all could, kept in perspective and doesn't become something daily that then becomes an adverse thing in your life. So with that said, I think you all want to get up and move. That's why you're here today. We will start with a warm up because it's always good to get the joints mobilized, everything working before I put you into these different challenge movements. So we're going to get up, a little beat on, a little warm up, and they'll get right to those uh, gallon, uh, those challenge goals that we have for those four identified uh, movements we'll be doing this month. Okay, you guys ready? Raise your hand if you are. Uh, I can't see you, but I'll just imagine that you are. Okay, I'm going to start the beat and we are going to move our feet. Oh, please make sure to have some water nearby and a chair uh, close by as well because no problem with taking personal breaks and sitting down for a bit if need be. All right, let's all stand up nice and tall, right behind your board. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Hands on top, feet together, about shoulder width apart, let's say. And let's just start with our little heel plops or drops, whatever you, way you want to think of them. Just let them pound. And as they're making that little dropping action into the ground, they're gonna feel a little bit of a, I don't know, an impact, let's say, reverberating up through the heels, calves, thighs, pelvic floor, abdominal wall, all the way to the top of the head. But think about allowing this to happen with perfect posture. Head up, chest up, shoulders back and down, abdominals pulled in slightly like a cylinder. 360, engage those abs. Very nice. Keep dropping those heels in eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now let's roll the feet up and down. Just roll up and push your heel towards me, towards your board. And let's take and flip the fingers as well. So we're just going to do a little bit of end of the extremity movement here. So the feet, the hands, the fingers, the toes. Push those heels through and then roll it back down. Excellent. Splay the fingers out wide. That's it. Nice and gentle. That's the way every warm up should be. Just coaxing those muscles into movement, getting those joints to mobilize. Excellent. Four more times. Four and three and two last one now the knee comes up down up down let's just start and allow your body to rock a little bit side to side holding those poles letting the board even rock a little bit just get used to a little bit of a side balance hold the core tight lift up and down lift up and down so notice i'm purposely allowing my body to lean in the opposite direction of the knee lift. Those muscles in my abdominal region and my spine have to contract to keep my body feeling nice and strong and stable. Four, and three, and two, and one. Now from here, we're gonna go up, tap, down, floor. Up, just tap on the board lightly with the toe. Up, tap, and back, up, tap. So you'll notice you have to tighten up in that hip area 
to stabilize your body a little longer and bring that tap motion into play. Good. Again. Up. Tap. And you know, if you find yourself wobble a little bit, that's okay. That's actually great because it's waking up the neurological system to automatically figure out what it needs to do to keep you upright and in good alignment. Excellent. Four more. Here we go. Four. Tap down. Three. Keep that head up high. Chest lifted as well. One more. Up. Tap. Up and back. Now step it out wide and let's bend and lunge, bringing a little bit more action and movement to the knees and the hips. Lunge it side. Notice once again my body is shifting along with that knee bend. So as I bend to the right, my body shifts right. Good. Be light and airy. Those fingers wiggling every once in a while, don't over grip. Keep it light. Now we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this and we're gonna slow it down and allow the foot to make a lifting action on the leg that's straight. Foot up, toes peel off the floor. Oh boy, here's where you're gonna really start to feel some stretching going on into the hips, the hamstrings, the inner thighs, the calves. Dynamically going side to side. Beautiful. If your hips are sticking back a little bit to the back wall, you're holding on to your handles, but keeping your spine pretty straight or pretty neutral. Four more. Three, how's that feel? Two, and last side, each one. Then let's bring it back to the center. Toes forward, feet flat. Let's do some spinal rolling, down and round. Again. I just love this move. It feels so good to the spine and it really helps to teach you about your core of your body. All those muscles that surround the spine. They flex, they extend, they support. Engage them and get that blood flow going through the spine, increasing some of that joint fluid, synovial fluids as you move through. Inhale and exhale, roll all the way through. Excellent, two more. Last time, tuck in the chin, rolling through all the way up to the neck and head. Now hold it right here and just tilt the head right left. Oh, that upper part of the back the spine, the cervical vertebra, they get tense and tight. So let's really try to address them. Keep in mind good posture with the rest of your body as you focus in on the neck. Tilt and center. And now we're just gonna look right, look center, look left. Center, left. Tall body, beautiful. Keep your shoulders pulled down and back. You've got it. And now low and slow, half circle roll. Down, down and up. And back, just a half circle. Two more. Nice deep breath, last one. Bring that head up nice and high. Now shrug those shoulders down and around. Roll it back. Activate those mid-back muscles between the shoulder blades. And now let's row one arm at a time. Just pull back and around, back and around. Open up the chest, stretch across, down and back. You've got this. Let your body twist a little bit through the spine, opening up. A couple more. Last two. Last one. Now let's take the right arm. Let's warm up the lateral side of the body right here. Just reach over and back. You can allow that heel to rise up as you stretch across the side of the body. 
Reach up and over like you're painting the ceiling and then pull it back down behind you. Beautiful. Excellent. Last one. And then let's bring that arm back down. Take the other arm up and over. Once again, allow the entire side of the body to stretch. Under the arm, all the way down through to the foot. Reach up and over. Nice broad stroke. Inhale and exhale. We got this. A couple more. Last one. All right, now bring it back to center. Shoulders down. Walk the feet together, toes and heels coming in. All right, just bend the knees softly. Get a comfortable stance with your feet because we're ready. Are you ready? We're ready to start our first challenge, which by the way, if you have a chart nearby and you wanna come back between each one and write down what you've done so you don't forget, I'm, I'm cool with that, okay? We're gonna start, we're gonna to progress to the 30 second hold on each foot. Last week we did 20 seconds, so let's see how we are doing today. Stand on the right, center it out, take the left and hold it off. Ready, set, go. Right there, try to hold steady. Know that you can always put your hands back down on the poles or tap that toe to the ground behind you if you need it there for a second or two. That's okay. Our goal is to stay as long and strong as we can on this one foot. Today, our goal is 30 seconds. We've got five seconds left to go. Three, two, one, and hooray, you're done. All right, let's ease that out a little bit with a nice slow lift and drop step. Good. Awesome, are you ready for the other foot? Okay, so we're now going to step on to our left foot, put it in the center, kick up your right, find your center, hold it, and then let go. All right, I'm watching. We got 30 seconds on this side as well. And remember, there's no shame in tapping down or holding your poles if you need to. You might want to just make a note of that. And maybe your progression will just be that you not only go a little longer, but you need less tap downs or times out. Hold it nice and tight through your core, almost there. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, shake off that foot. If you wanna log that down, feel free to go log it down. Maybe you gave in a few seconds early, put that down as well. We're gonna move on now to our step ups and our goal today is 15 on each leg, all right? This should be pretty easy because I do a lot of step ups in this class. But for some of you that are new, maybe it's not so easy. So let's just see how we feel. We're going to take it with the right leg first. Here we go. Up and down. That's one. Two. Here we go. Three. If you want to make this tougher, see if you can do it without holding on with both hands. Four. Or maybe five, no hands. Ooh, boy, that's hard. So these are progressions you can add in if you want to. Here we go, seven, eight, try to keep going, nine, 10, 11, 12, Three more to go. 14, 15, and we're done with the right lead. So soften the knees here a bit. All right, how'd that feel? Did it make your legs a little tired? Did it make your heart rate elevate? Or maybe that was super simple, and that's okay too. Maybe you need to do several sets before you're tired. And that's where we'll progress as we keep going. Other leg, ready? Up. That's one, two, three, four. Full foot up, full foot down. Five. 
and six. Seven, now if this is too hard, you can also just be marching on the floor. Eight, nine, and 10. Five more. Four more. Last three. Two more. And one. And you're done. How'd it feel? All right, again, come around and write down if you got that 15 in with no problem. If you did, hey, you're, you're even doing better than expected by week two. So now we're gonna move on to the squats and we're gonna hit 15 today. We did 10 last time. Now, you're more than welcome to do them on the floor, but because most of us have been working on board a little more, I'm gonna do mine on the board. It's up to you though. Feet comfortable distance apart. Remember that the goal in a squat is to sit back and try to get your knees and your thighs as close to parallel to floor as you can and then bring the hips back up. Are you ready? Again, feel free to do this on the floor if you prefer. Here we go. First squat ready. One, and up, like you're sitting in a chair. Two, and up, good. Three, and up, four, and up, five, I know if you're on board, you have to really work hard to go slow. Good, seven coming up. Getting those hips down. Tightening those thighs on the up. Here we go. Coming on 10. Five more to go. Last four. Sit back into those hips, keep that spine long and strong. Three, you're almost there. Two more. Last one. Awesome, all right, bottom out, step off. How'd that feel? You know, if these are easy for you, remember you can always make it a little tougher by doing more. But for now, we're gonna move on to the push-ups. So today we're gonna to try to get seven in. We got five in hopefully last time. Now remember, push-ups, I gave you lots of options. You can do them against the wall. You can do them on your poles. You can do them on the floor, on a chair, on your board, which would be the hardest, okay? I've chosen to use my poles. So I'm gonna come into a distance that I feel I'm in control, bend my knees softly, and then I'm just gonna drop and press away, straighten the elbows, keeping the knees soft. So what's my goal again? We're gonna try to do seven. Are you with me? Any kind of push-up you want. Ready, here we go. One, push. Two, push. Three, push. Four, push, five, try to get the rest of your body still, push, six, can you feel those muscles working in the upper body? Last one, and push, awesome, all right, shake them off. How'd you feel? Write it down. Now the reason that we're not doing as much with the upper body as the lower body is because oftentimes, especially in our classes, it's lower body dominant, so we do have more strength with the squats than usually the push-ups. But if you've been doing your push-ups and you think you can get more in, you go for it. All right, we're done with our challenge moves. Let's get on with the rest of the workout. I'm gonna check in real quick. Maybe you guys can get a little drink of water, write down your scores if you have a chart out, and then let's get moving. I just wanted to see if there was any other comments. And since not, Vicky's in the house. Let's get moving. All right, so here we go. March it out. Remember what I said about trying to get that 10 minutes of non-stop cardio style activity in for brain health, for mood elevation, for a feeling of accomplishment? Now we're gonna do that. So for the next 10 minutes, 
I'm going to keep it really simple, but really moving. And I'd like for you to try to get the heart rate and the respiratory system up enough where you feel like you need to breathe a little more than normal, a little deeper, a little faster, but not uncomfortably so. If that happens, just slow down or sit down for a while. All right, marching it out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, basic step right. Up, up, down, down. Good. You've done this. Four more. Three, two, one more. Then we're going to do a Y or V step. Toes up, toes out. One, down, and two, down, three, one more. Now back to basic for four. Four, three more. Two, one more, and wide step, out, out, again, out, out, two more, out, out, last one, now basic for two, here we go, up, up, one more, now wide for two, One more. Let's do that again. Basic for two. Full step on, full step down. Head high. Wide step. One more. All right, how about one of each? One basic, one wide. Up, up. Wide, wide. Do that again. Again. Wide, wide. All right, last time, right lead. And then heel drop center. Up and down, up and down. Pound those arms with those heels. Come on, slap those handles. Jar those bones just a bit. Stimulate that bone density. Here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. March left. Left. Left, right. Come on, let's keep that cardio going. Easy march in place. Not too high. Just like a little bicycle pedal. Up and down, up and down. On the beat. That's it. Head high. Chest up. Elevate that heart rate. Elevate that mood. All right? Basic left. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Same pattern as the other side. Four of each. Wide step for four. Four. Let that board rock. Three. One more. Again, basic. Four. And three. And two. And one. Wide step for four. You've got this. One more. Now two of each. Basic first. Up. Up. Full foot on. Full foot off. Wide step. Toes out. You can look down occasionally, but in most cases you want to keep your posture up and your vision forward. Two. Basic. And then out wide. How about 
one and one. Here we go. Basic. Wide step. Again, lift that foot well. Get that full foot on. Give yourself the time to bring it back down. Again, up, two, down. And out, two, back. Up, two, down. And out, two, couple more. Here we go. Come on. Stay steady. Breathe. Feel the need. Up, two, react. Last time. Up, up. Out, out. Now stay down, heels and palms. Pound it. Let's jar it a little bit. Woo. Keep going. We're about halfway there. Time is going fast when you're having fun. We want to get at least 10 to 12 minutes in, non-stop. Let's march right, right, left, right. Keep that energy high. Keep that posture tall. Chin up, chest up. All right, step it to the right, right, left, right, left. Now, if this is a little fast, it's okay if you slow down. Step, right, step, left, step. Right, step, left, tap, tap. Good. Rock that body side to side on the floor. Breaking up those lateral muscles of the body. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now step it up. Two and two. And let's rock it out on the board. Left and right, right and left. Shift that weight. Push through the legs. Keep the core strong. Bend the knees slightly. Rock it left to right, right to left. Nice. Feel the power you have to push and shift. All right, let's pick up that tempo. Go, boom, boom, boom. See what you need to do to move that board a little faster to the beat. We take it left, right, right, left. Bend those knees a bit more. Engage those lower body muscles. Now also push the palms into those handles. Engage some of those biceps, forearms, chest. Push, push, rock, rock, chin up, chest high, knees soft. Keep it going. You got this. Nice deep breaths. In four, in three, in two, in one. Now step it in, in, out, out. One, one. Two to two. In, in. Out. Just get comfortable with it. Let it roll a bit. In. And out. And in. And out. Excellent. In. Two. Out. Two. Center. Side. Center. Side. Center. Real tall. Center. Now stay side and take it to a plie squat or toe out sumo style. Equal out those knees. Try to get both pushing and bending and looking the same. Let that board wobble a little bit. Now push the arms in as you bend the knees. Engage the uppers and lower extremities. And out. In and out. Good. We got this. Woo. Keep that movement flow going. That heart rate elevated. That cardio status in a train zone. Two more. And one. Now from here we walk it. Right, left. Right, left. So I believe we were leading with the left last time. 
I always like to let the brain balance out a little bit by making sure we do similar patterning on both the right and the left. Good. Out wide, inside. Out wide, inside. Good job. Now you notice we haven't taken any breaks. We've got about three minutes to go. And we'll hit that 10 to 12 minute mark. That's our minimum for non-stop. If that's a goal for this month, then maybe we'll let that grow as the month goes on, as well as those initial moves that we're charting. See if we can keep that flow going. Good. Out, out, in, in. Beautiful. We got this. In, two, out, two. Let that board do its natural reaction to the shift of weight. Let your body then react to that change in posture, change in balance, change in angle. Good. You got it. Feel your feet, your ankles, your knees, your hips, your core. They're all engaging. You got it. Two more. Last one. Now this time the feet will come together alongside the red line. Instead of the plie squat, we're going to do the sit back squat. So sit back and up and back and up and back and up and as you're coming up push your arms down against those poles just kind of imagine you could drive them down into the board further and feel a little engagement in the shoulder girdle so see my shoulders they rise up and then they drop down and my neck looks longer Really get the scapula pushing down. Rise up, push down. Nice, breathe again. Inhale, exhale, hips to the back wall. Sit it back, lift it up, drop the scapula. As you come up, you can put your palms on top of your poles if that feels a little more comfortable. Again, down. And up. Last one. Awesome. All right, now rock it here. Center it out. Lift the heels. Whew, we're almost there. Let's go. Now let the feet come up. If you can, we call it the board jog. Little prance up high. Chin up, chest up. Finish strong. Come on, you've got this. Let's go, let's go. Up, back, up. Excellent. Almost there. You can see the 12 minute finish line. Some of you maybe went 10 minutes, some of you 12. Depends on if you caught up with me from the very beginning or not. Let's go. Chin up, chest up, head up. Good posture. Nice. You might think, wow, what's the big deal here? But there is so much more going on when you try to do a little move like this on an unstable or slightly unstable surface. I like to call it unstable with control. Because you do have control. Why? Think about it. That board can't completely walk over. There's an end limit to it. A few inches is all. And then you've got these great poles to help you stay right, upright, and tall. So, yes, you're getting the benefits of the reactiveness of working on an unstable surface with the safety and reliance of knowing that, in general, you are in control. Here we go. Wait. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now stick it. Hold. Balance. Get that board in the middle. Get it in the middle. That's it. Balance. See if you can let go. Ooh, that's when you know whether you're really balanced or not. Feel free to hold on if you need to. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And let's go back to the jog. 
Good. Chin up, chest up. Now, we are way past our 10 minutes, aren't we? So remember, that's why your chair's back there. So that if you feel like, okay, one round of that was just about enough, feel free to sit back and take a cheap little break. But if you've been one of my regulars and you're saying, oh, bring it on, let's do more, and let's keep going. Maybe mark that down on your chart, how you felt today. Were you able to keep going past that 10 to 12 minute mark? Good. Nice. Keep jogging. Now as we're doing our little light jog, I want to change it up a little bit. So we're going to go out, out, in, in. Just like we do on the floor sometimes. Or like we do with the step up where we go a little wider. But granted, this out, out, in, in is smaller. It's just about the two, two, one, one. Good. Again. That's just going to challenge your brain and your body a bit more when working on this little bit of a shift of surface. Good, you're in control. Soften the knees, lift the chest, drop the shoulders. You've got this. Can you feel the heart rate still elevated? Now, if you have a heart rate monitor on, it's easy to check, right? You've got one of those smart watches. But if not, you still can oftentimes sense that your heart rate is a little elevated because you're breathing deeper. You just feel the need to breathe. And that correlates pretty well, pretty well with what's happening to the heart rate, the heart rate response. Four more. Three, two, stick it and hold. Now find the center. Ah, see if you can let go. Woo! Maybe you want to shake off those hands a little bit. See if you can surf it. Find your balance. Here we go. You're on the way. Seven, six, five. Posture tall. Four, three, two, and one. Hands to poles. All right. Now we're going to tap back and up. We're going to lunge back and up. Now bring your foot as it comes up, right alongside that red line. Good. Step back and then bring it up. And step back. I love this one because not only is it really a nice leg strengthener, but it also allows a little bit of stretch out for that hip and that hip flexor of the leg that moves back. Good. Just let it go down and up. Down and up. Beautiful. That's it. Deep breath. Four more. Three. Two. And then we're going to leave the right leg in the back position. We're going to stand up nice and tall, put the foot where it's comfortable to do a stationary lunge. We're just going to bend and extend both knees. And when I say comfortable, sometimes you'll find maybe that leg is so far back that it's hard to stay up tall, or maybe it's so close to the front foot that the knees don't feel like they have anywhere to go. So make the adjustment accordingly so that you feel good about bending and extending those legs. Good. Four more times. Really working on some of that stability in the hip and knee and the strength of the lower body. Last one. Now we're going to balance. So find your one foot, balance, see if you can do it. Now if you're on the red line, you can try to keep the board in the center. If you're on the side, then just balance with one side grounded out. That's fine as well. Look at mine. Oh boy, does that tell the tale whether you're balancing easily or not? When you have your hands on your poles, you're like, oh, this isn't so hard because your arms are helping with the stability. But boom, you let go and now it's all ankle, knee, and hip and core. And you really can see how you're doing. Here we go in four, three, two, one, and bring the feet back together. Remember what leg that was, right? Left leg. Ease it out a little bit. 
Good job. All right, now keep the right leg up and let's come to the stationary lunge position and go back into that bending and extending, lower body focused, up and down. Working on mobility, working on stability, and of course, strength. Good, chin and chest up. I positioned my foot on the board so that it's right over that red line, so that when I go into the balance move, I can try to keep that board centered. But again, remember, if that's just too tough, if you keep it off center, it might feel a little easier to manage until you get a little bit better at some of these movements. We want to progress, we want to stay challenged, but comfortably so. Nice, make sure both knees are bending. And remember, if that leg is too close and the knees feel like they have nowhere to go, step it back. If that leg is too far and you feel like I can't stay tall, step it in. Everybody's stance is going to be based on their own leg length and comfort level. If you have kind of bad knees, you might want to minimize the bend and just make it a much smaller, tighter move. Two more. Last one now. Hold. Find your balance. If you want a challenge, oh boy, that's a lot of challenge for me today. Hold or not. Maybe one hand. No shame in doing a one-handed challenge and then switching. Even that, boy, can you see how much harder it is when you take those hands off? It's all on that ankle, all on that leg, and then here. So don't ever underestimate that other muscles are coming into play to stabilize you. Like right now, I have to use more of my arms and shoulder girdle to help keep that center. And that's a good thing too. So challenge is good, but so is multi-joint, multi-muscle contribution. Good job, breathe. Almost. Here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. All right, let's get some water. Oh my gosh, I haven't reminded you. I should have probably told you to get water sooner, but let's all come together and get a little water now. And we're gonna go into a little bit more of what I would say upper body focus since the last series you probably felt some fatigue growing in those legs. Remember fatigue is your friend. Fatigue is the point at which muscles have to adapt and strengthen. Pain or failure, in other words I'm working so hard that I ugh, can't do it, that is going past fatigue. That's not necessary. It just increases risk of burnout or injury. So, fatigue is your friend. Some of us might not think that. I'm not talking general fatigue. I'm talking muscle specific fatigue. And hopefully if we can get those muscles toned up, then general fatigue goes down as well. That's the goal. All right, here we go. Now, I told you we're gonna work a little more on upper body. So let's come back to behind but this time I want you to turn and face right, putting your left hand on the right pole, all right? Then I want you to put your left foot up on the board. And then what I want you to do is I want you to pull and press with the arm muscles in mind. So pull and lean, press. Allow the knee to bend as well. And the nice thing is at the same time that you're doing this upper body action, contracting the bicep, pushing away, you're gonna feel the front leg contribute and the back leg stretch, and I love that about this. Pull and press. Pull and press. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Four more, press three, press, two, press, one. Now hold here, hold here, that's it. Now hold and feel the contraction in the arm as you put some weight here. And then from this position, we're just gonna lift up and balance, keeping weight on this arm and shoulder. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one, and back. Shake off that arm. Did you feel a little fatigue grow? It doesn't have to be a lot. Let's turn it around. All right. Now placing the right foot up, the right hand on the pole, left foot back into a nice stride position. We're gonna lean, we're gonna pull as we lean forward and push as we lean back. Pull the pole, push. Now, you have the metal poles, which some of you might. It's not gonna have as much give, but that's okay because you're still gonna be isometrically contracting with a little dynamic transition between the two positions. Pull and press. Bend the knee, keep the heel down and stretch that back leg and hip. Good. Abdominals held tight, spine staying in its nice neutral position, even though it's leaning forward. Good. Use that bicep to pull. Pull and press. Again, pull and press. Pull and press. Pull. Breathe. That's it. Good. A couple more. Use your shoulder girdle. Pull with your scapula. Pull back. Push away. Pull back. Push away. And now come in and hold. Push down on that pole with your hand. Pull your shoulder blade down and hold the balance. Just push that pole like you're trying to drive it into the ground. Hold that body weight and contract this shoulder girdle. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Isometrics, nice and long, nice and strong. Don't lift that back heel or leg too high. You don't want to arch the lower back as you hold the position. Stay put, four, three, two, one, and relax. Shake it off. Again, if feeling the need to kind of shake the muscles off is something you sense, that's a good thing. That means there is some fatigue there, and that blood circulation, that fresh flow of blood and oxygen makes it feel better when the fatigue is built. It helps reduce that feeling of fatigue. All right, come back to the center now. Feet forward. Now this next and final exercise before the cool down, we really want us to work on from a functional perspective so we can maybe feel better about getting up and down from the floor. Now the main thing is to learn to hinge from the hip without using the spine or rounding the spine. So let's just do, it's called a deadlift. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can have a better idea of what I'm asking for. So I just want you to fold. I sometimes call it a hip hinge, like a door hinge at the hip. But notice as I do this, I'm not rounding my back. And that's something that it's very common that our neurological system makes, almost makes like a team action out of. Like as soon as you go to bend, the back bends too. So we need to get that mind to muscle patterning re-scripted a little bit here. So sit back and keep your spine long and strong. And just get used to folding at the hip without dropping the chest and sternum. That's it. Make that connection in your mind. All right? Couple more. Now this next time we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna put the hands on the thighs instead of the poles. Now hopefully your balance is well enough today to do so, to do this. But this is kind of progressing that action that you might have to do if you were gonna bend up and pick that red ball up off of that platform, that 60 up platform, right? Now it doesn't get us quite low enough, does it? No, it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay at the hinge position, stay, and then just reach towards it without bending the spine, bring the hand back, and come up. Let's do it again with the other hand. Hip hinge, reach without rounding, put it back, and come up. We'll do a few of those. So again, I'm going to show you from a, lot, a little bit more side view. 
So notice I'm really trying to teach my brain to not go right into spinal flexion when I want to get down low to pick something up. To really engage and utilize those larger joints of the hip, knee, and ankle to get me closer to the ground. Which, some of which has to do with mobility or neural patterning, and some of which has to do with pure strength in the hips and thighs. So we are building strength for the range as well as length for the range. Good. So now I say to myself, this is great, but I'm not getting to the ball, am I? All right, so I'm gonna add something to this. Are you ready? So I want you to watch what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step one foot on the board, hip hinge, and then come back. Step close to the ball, hip hinge, and come back. So I'm doing kind of like a one-legged version of that squat, and then I'm reaching, and notice I'm getting a lot closer to that ball when I do that. So first of all, I'm stepping closer to it, but secondly, I'm also creating a stride or tandem position which kind of frees me up to get down a little closer to the ball. Are you still with me? Now, the board is wobbling, so I'm getting the added benefit of stabilizing as I do this. So this is also something that some of you might prefer to keep it simple. There went my ball to do it on the floor initially. So you can just work on getting closer to that ball. Now notice my other hand comes to my thigh. See, I have one side that's a little bit less mobile than the other. So it's harder for me to get down here on this right leg. Oh, but I can do it if I take my time. Try to tap it. Now I want you to notice from the side, you guys can keep going, that as I'm doing this, what I'm not doing is allowing my head, chest, and shoulders to drop prematurely. So its real tendency is to do this, and that's what I want to avoid. Because where the head goes, oftentimes the rest of the body goes, doesn't it? So I don't want to fall. I want to control my descent and be able to get down to pick up an object by using those leg muscles and that mechanics of the one leg lunge or squat to get me down there. Ooh, I'm getting tired, how about you? Are you still doing this with me? Last one. Awesome, and then come on up. Ooh, that itself was cardio, wasn't it? All right, let's shake it out. You deserve a little rest here. Let's come behind our board if you were working on the floor. And remember, just because I was able to get all the way down and touch that ball doesn't mean that automatically you're going to be able to. You may get down and just maybe only get to here before your back rounds. That's okay, that's the start. And then the finish, which maybe we'll work towards this month, another great goal, would be able to get all the way down onto the ground using that same mechanic and take ourselves to floor position. Now, not that everybody cares whether they go to the floor position or not. What they do care about is that once they are in the floor position, can they reverse the action and figure out how to get themselves back up safely. All right? So I want you to notice, if you were watching, that the mechanics of me getting down are the reverse of the mechanics getting up, or vice versa. And that's why we do these moves because they are very functional to certain things in life that we want to be able to continue to do, play with our grandkids, to pick up our puppies, to clean the house, and God willing, get up from a fall safe and sound. All right, let's reach up and over and stretch. Again, other side. I want to thank you for joining me today, this beautiful Wellness Wednesday, where we work on our awareness, our health, our goals, and hopefully the rewards will make themselves known by the end of the month as you just feel better. Let's cross and give a big hug and a pat on the back. Let's open, let's recross, 
Sit the pat on the back. Let's take the, the breath up, grab the energy out of the room, pull it back down, and give yourself a nice bow and a hand for being here today. Thank you again for joining me. I'm Kathy Stevens. I'm here every Wednesday, and I'm hoping that you will be too, but they are recorded, and you can come back and repeat them or do them later in the week, um, as well as the same for Dan's Tuesday, Thursday live sessions. I also try to post mine on YouTube so, as well, so that it, if it's a, one you really liked from a long time ago and you can't seem to find it on the members page, it might be up on the 60th YouTube. Uh, page. Again, I want to thank you guys and let you know that I am here for you seven days a week. Pat, thanks for the shout out. Thank you. And I do check my comments um, throughout the week so that if anybody's got any questions or anything like that, they just want to say hi. I love hearing from you guys. That's the beauty of the 60 Up product is that we're not just a product. We are a membership. So keep on coming back, and I'll see you next week on Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday. Signing off. Have a great one. Take care.